1984 Australian Championship, but in six matches so far this year, in the Buffalo Gold Cup Night Series and National Cup, they've won only once. Will they come good here at Middle Park today, or will Green Gully's ace striker, Paul Lewis, add to their woes? He's still angry about the way he was treated here last year when South Melbourne bought him from Green Gully but sold him back again after only seven matches. In six games over the past month or so, Lewis has scored an incredible nine goals, including one in a 1-1 draw between these two sides in the Buffalo Cup. But if things have been going well for Green Gully, what's been going wrong for South Melbourne Hellas? It's a question we asked their new president, Jim Jamataris. We're missing five players of the first team last year's team, as you know, we're the champions, and uh, that unsettled, unsettled the team. Uh, we had uh, Azadon, Murphy, Ange Angelo uh, Pastoglu was injured in playing Green Gully and play half a game with a broken arm. And, uh, of course, Murphy wasn't playing, and this is what uh, actually happened. But uh, we'll be all right this year. I think the, today you're going to see a different team. And there's the kickoff. Green Gully missing Stuart Cannell, their captain. He's suspended after being sent off in the National Cup and uh, that may affect their chances because Canal is their number one defender. Here's a through ball for Lewis. He chases, but Steve Blair gets it back to his goalkeeper, Peter Lormetz. <laughs> now South Melbourne on the attack, headed away by Krajacic. Mormon sends it forward, but the offside flag goes up. As Bobby Russell finds Holford. The kick comes in, headed away by Murray. Here's Doug Brown with a shot, but one-handed save by Lou Dennis. What a lovely save by the Green Gully keeper. A powerful drive by Doug Brown, who's been the top scorer in the National League over the past two seasons. Room to come through the midfield. Taken away by McClellan. Back again by Eisendorn, and now Egan. Egan takes his shot, punched away by Dennis. Another great save by that man. Eisendorn did all the work coming forward. He set up Egan for the shot. A good one it was too, but spoiled by Dennis. Over the top, Egan comes in, and Egan on an angle, bounces it in off the far post. That's one nil to South Melbourne. Charlie Egan, the scorer. What an opportunist he is. Gary McDowell heads it on. Here comes Egan, flicks it past Dennis. He's in the clear, and he bounces it in off the far post. McClellan. Lucchese's in the middle, uses his skill to bring it down, but he's outnumbered, really. Lewis knocks it into the middle again. Here's Lloyd. Lloyd White for Smart. Can he cross it in? He gets it on the line. Still in play, here's Lloyd, and Lucchese, and Lewis, and Lewis puts it away. That's 1-1. One, one. Paul Lewis, his 10th goal so far this year in seven games. He just can't stop this guy, but uh, he got a lot of help that time. There's Lucchese. Lloyd, repelled. Back to Lucchese. He knocks it square, and no trouble at all for Lewis. But not much time left in this first half. In fact, uh, there can't be more than about a minute. Here comes Holford with a long shot, and a great save by Dennis once more. That's a corner once more for a South Melbourne, but Dennis has really been in unbelievable form. So no changes at half time as Woody Vassallo sends the ball forward for Green Gully. Lewis knocks it past uh, Eisendorn, but Bobby Russell's there to clear. 
ground. Blair. And a one-handed save by Dennis again. Steve Blair coming so, so close to making it 2-1 on this corner from Brown. Watch this save. First Blair up. And there it is, over the top. These really are uh, Green Gully's best chances of scoring because the long ball to Lewis isn't really coming off. Smallman! Two one. Lewis is second. Here's the corner by Williams. Headed far post by Smallman, and Lewis is there to put it just inside the post. Going into this match, uh, Green Gully had three wins, three draws, no losses. They've scored 12 goals and conceded five in the cup matches so far this year, whereas South Melbourne Hellas had only one win, two draws and three losses for a goals tally of 6-6. Here's Holford, across goal, and Egan puts it in, 2-2. Two -two. Nice move. Well, Egan doing a Lewis. Two goals each, these two men. Holford, the man who set it up. Go wide from Brown to Holford. And he puts it inside. Egan's there. 2-2. Two -two. Ken Smart. Oh my God, half the ground is now running towards the player's race on the far side. And apparently all of them after that one uh, fellow in green. No police in sight anywhere. And that certainly is strange. <laughs> now, one of the spectators trying to hog the ball. He just won't give it back. It's taken away from him. In the meantime, another one's thrown in from the far side. Now, there are two balls in play, but uh, they're getting rid of the other one. So, a free kick taken by Smallman. Too high for McClellan, here comes Smart. Can he reach it before McDowell does? He, he's trying to get wide now for the cross. McDowell gets in the tackle and it goes out for a throw in. Brown. McDowell. Murphy. And the referee pointing to the spot. A penalty has been awarded. So there must have been a handball in there somewhere. We'll have another look at that. McDowell's header, Murphy's header, and I think it was Krajacic on the line. Uh, it's the uh, handball must have given against, been given against him, but uh, we may have another look at that later on as South Melbourne prepares to take the penalty. It'll be Doug Brown, number 10. And he puts it away. Great for South Melbourne Hellas. And here's the replay of that incident that led to the penalty. Now that, it looked to have uh, struck Krajacic on the chest rather than the hand, but in any case, the penalty was given. final whistle. South Melbourne Hellas has won the match 3-2 with a penalty by Doug Brown. Yeah, South Melbourne winning in the end with a penalty that didn't entirely please members of the Green Gully camp. After the game, Laurie Schwab took up that issue with South Melbourne striker Charlie Egan. What about that penalty? Was it uh, a fair decision? Yeah, I thought it was fair. The Green Gully boys didn't even protest, you know. I thought actually myself it was over the line, but then again, I'd have to see that again in camera. But uh, I thought it was a fair decision. And you did uh, get the uh, final header in there? 
Yeah, I headed it. Kenny Murphy um, knocked it on, and I was about, I think, three, four yards out, I just headed it. Well, you started the season slowly, or rather, you started the cup competition slowly. Does this mark your comeback? Well, I think actually the, the, the boys, maybe myself, think, oh, we've done it easy last year, though. we'll just go out and teams will hand things to us. It's totally the opposite. Everybody's out to try and beat us, and I think uh, after the way Macedonia played against us last week, uh, I think we finally woke up to ourselves, and you know, we've got to compete just like them. Well, what of that controversial penalty from Green Gully's point of view? Robert Krajacic, the sweeper, was on the line as it happened. Robert, was it a penalty? Uh, yes, Laurie, it was. Um, I tried to make it look as if it wasn't a penalty by bringing my knee up as well, but uh, unfortunately the ref was in a good position to see it and um, he made a right decision, I thought. Laurie Schwab reporting from Middle Park. Followed by John Cosmina and Frank Elbin has been fined $5,000 and placed on a $5,000 bond. NSL general manager Stefan Kamas says this strict action was taken following an incident which left a Green Gully supporter seriously injured in a match between South Melbourne and Green Gully at Middle Park. A special...